Hello ladies, gents and devoted cultists! In this installment of Spelunky 101, we're going to learn everything there is to know about our most exalted mistress, the goddess Kali. Worshipping this fickle deity in Spelunky is really quite easy. All you need to do is let go of your moral compass and offer up other people's souls to her eternal glory. If you feel a little queasy about that, all you need to do is tell yourself that they had it coming. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's first cover the basics. Kali altars can spawn in almost any level from 1-2 onwards, including a guaranteed altar within the haunted castle, which can be accessed by bombing beneath the king's tomb in an undead jungle level. To sacrifice a hapless victim, simply drop their bodies onto the surface of the altar. When you accrue enough favor with Kali in this way, she will reward you. But be careful, if you displease her by destroying her altar or failing to protect it from harm, she will hold you responsible, regardless of your intentions. It won't matter whether it's your fault or not, it's just like marriage! <laughs> but don't you worry, because Callie is willing to forgive you. You simply need to bring her more bodies. Both rewards and forgiveness are awarded based on how many points you've earned for your sacrifices. Rewards come at 8, 16, and 32 points. If an altar is destroyed, you will lose 16 points, and if this causes you to go into negative values, you will incur Kali's spidery wrath, which is the lesser of her punishments. All the different entities that you can condemn to eternal servitude have a different point value assigned to them. And just like with kidnapping, live creatures are far more valuable than corpses. You'll get double points if your sacrifice is still alive. Let's go down the list. Live Damsels, Hard Hands, Player Characters, and the Black Knight are all at the top, worth 8 points each. While your co-op partner and your personal slave may be rather reluctant to fill Kali's embrace, not that he should stop, those helpless damsels are always willing to take one for the team. Just make sure not to walk over the exit while carrying them because then they'll escape and that is just heartbreaking. Or you know, don't accidentally shoot them in the face before you realize you could use them. Hello, good sir. Come with me. I will rescue you. <laughs> okay. Next come live shopkeepers at 6 points each. Good luck with that. Stun Hawkman and Scorpion Flies make for easier prey, but you won't find them until the tempo. Dead Damsels, Hard Hands and Player Character Corpses are worth 4 points. Well, not as valuable, it's just like I told my wife after drowning Johnny and Timmy in the bathtub. At least they're not struggling anymore. Stun Yetis and Scorpions are also worth 4 points. A shopkeeper's corpse will net you 3 points and the deep satisfaction of sending them where they belong. Live cavemen, tiki men, vampires, plants, blue demons and yo mama's IQ are all only 2 points each, just like a dead yeti. Fun fact! Kali likes to buy in bulk. Finally, the lowly corpses of cavemen, tiki men, and blue demons will only give you one point so many times you won't even bother with these guys. So what will Kali bestow upon your unworthy husk? At 8 points, you will get a random item from this pool. In her infinite wisdom, Kali will only give you an item if you don't already have it, so it pays to explore the level first in case one of these items is already tucked away in a crate. If you have every one of these items, Kali will reach into the future and drop a jetpack on your ass. If you already have that, she'll throw her hands in the air and go all like, oh, screw it, oh, fuck it, just, just screw it, here's a dozen bombs, knock yourself out. At 16 points, you will get an official sponsorship deal in the form of a magical skull-shaped goblet that collects the blood of your enemies. Every time you fill up the Kapala, your health will go up by one, so start collecting those pellets like they're runaway slaves. You can get extra blood by torturing the damsel before rescuing it. Two whippings is all those wimps will tolerate before dying. Nothing is out of bounds when collecting blood. Kill the tiny innocent critters as well. Got some time? Lure a mummy to a good spot and collect their vomit. This delicious substance counts as blood and will give you a whole heart per load. You can also throw corpses into spikes to get extra blood pellets, use the Chris knife to chunk them and drink them, or make a nice corpse flesh paste and have it with pizza. At 24 points you get nothing, because who the hell do you think you are? Finally at 32 points you have become Kali's Chosen, worthy of a godly health integration. If you're aiming to make it through the Moai head, you're better off getting this integration after you kill yourself, 
so keep close count of how much Kelly loves you. Further sacrifices, while they won't provide you with anything tangible, will fill your breast with sweet ecstatic zeal. Blood for the blood goddess! Blood for the blood goddess! Blood for the blood! On the other hand, if you incur Kali's wrath, you will be punished for your impudence. But if you are greedy enough, her punishments can become a blessing in disguise. The negative consequences of her anger are directly related to the number of altars you have destroyed, regardless of how much she might like you to begin with. If you destroy one altar, you'll get the spiders, unless she already liked you enough to give you the Kapali, in which case she will simply frown with deep, deep disapproval. If you destroy a second altar, Kali will clip your wings by attaching a ball and chain to your ankle. You can assert your blasphemous defiance by getting rid of it in a number of ways. Crush it! Melt it in lava! Toss it into the abyss if you have the climbing gloves. However, you can also use the ball and chain to destroy the Molai head, and thus get a weapon through to the next level. From this point forward, if you destroy another altar, the vengeful spirit of the caves shall answer Kali's outrage and start chasing you immediately. In her merciless wisdom, she also attaches another ball and chain to your leg at the same time. So good luck getting away. Oh, you made it through the exit to the next level? Feeling relieved that you escaped the ghost unscathed? Congratulations, now keep running, because the ghost will start chasing you again the moment you step in and will continue to spawn at the beginning of the level for as long as the ball and chain is still attached. This sounds dire, but greedy players can make this a goal, because keeping that ball and chain as you step into Omex Lair or Yama's Throne is the only way to ghost their stash of gems. Do bear in mind that you have to keep that ball and chain until you go into the boss fight. It won't work if you destroy it beforehand. Lastly, it's worth noting again that Kali is not exclusively interested on sacrificial flesh. In exchange for an idol, she will grant you the magnificent blessing of a deranged, suicidal, gold-pooping monkey that will barely cover the value of the idol itself. Whenever you do this, Kali has a good laugh at your expense. But in exchange of a present box, Kali will give you the ultimate reward. It's spoken of only hushed whispers, all Latin whispers, fretted with the most reverent of fears. It is a weapon that only the mightiest warriors are worthy of wielding, a weapon that will instantly obliterate the king of the underworld himself. It is the eggplant. Well, that just about does it. If you're a devout and proactive follower, Kali will make your journey through the Eternal Caves a bloody tale worthy of legend. If you sully her sacred domain, her displeasure will be the haunting burden leading straight to your demise. Tread carefully around the Goddess of Mischief. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Until then, I bid you farewell.